Hey guys, Andy here, and today on Andy Talks Japandi, this raw edition of Andy Talks Japandi, I'm going to be talking to, to you about who inspired me to come out to Japan. So, that said, let's get into it. And as I've told this story before, um, what who really inspired me to come out to Japan back in the early, early days were my cousins, who were a military family. They were stationed out in Yokosuka, Japan back in the early to mid 90s and they would send me a whole bunch of stuff uh, back home to Merkinjan land in rural Ohio and uh, that really got the ball rolling for me as far as wanting to come out to visit Japan and hang out with my cousins and see all the cool sights and all the kind of stuff that they were seeing and from there you know the anime boom happened in America back in the early to mid 2000s and then in the mid-2000s, you also had the rise of uh, blogs and vlogs on YouTube. So blog-wise is not really something I talk about, actually. I mostly talk about, like, the YouTubers and stuff. But blog-wise, you know, there's three people that I can remember off the top of my head because it's been so many years. But three people were Tame Goes Wild, uh, Gakuin Man, and, of course... Danny Chu, and uh, Danny especially was very inspirational to me. Um, I remember downloading like a lot of his uh, pictures and stuff because he would do photo blogs of his life out in Tokyo. Uh, he's mostly known nowadays as the guy who does the smart doll stuff, which is talking about like highly articulated doll figurines and stuff like that. It's not me personally. It's not really my jam, but. Uh, you know, I do appreciate the craftsmanship in it, and he seems to be super passionate about it, so really stoked for him and seeing the, all the excess that that entails. But before all that, he did a photo blog of his life out in Tokyo. And uh, back in the day, 10 plus years ago, uh, you know, he had a lot of high resolution photos, so I'd download a lot of them, use them as wallpapers, actually, as inspiration. And, you know, when I was moving stuff over to my hard drive, moving a lot of my old wallpapers and stuff over, I stumbled across a couple of those old ones. And, uh, excuse me. And, you know, they were at really small resolution, like I think 1400 by 900, something like that. So they're pretty tiny by today's standards, but back then they were pretty big. But uh, yeah, I just download a lot of those as inspiration her uh, one to get out to Japan myself one day and I think the post that really got to me the most was this really long post of his called uh, what inspired me to come to Japan and I have it up on my bookmarks under motivation so whenever I'm feeling a little down and feeling like well maybe this whole Japan thing isn't going to happen for the Andy Sands and Modesta, I uh go through that long ass post of Danny's and uh, get inspired all over again, even 10 plus years later. So <clears throat> just outlines like his whole upbringing out in England and what he did, you know, to get himself out to Japan and his first visit to Japan where back then he had like a little tape recorder with him. So he'd record all kinds of ambient noise in Japan, you know, like the trains and people walking by it should be a crossing and all those kinds of stuff and when he came back to England he would just listen to it while he was studying Japanese and you know doing work saving up for his next trip out to Japan and it's just so inspiring man and just mm, felt that you know and uh, from the blogs I went to vlogs on YouTube so the, uh, the two main ones that I talk about, even to this day, are Tokyo Kuni and the late, great Roger Swan. And there's obviously a lot of others out there, too. You know, you, you had Meyer Gnats, Tikio Sam, Busan Kevin, and uh, many others. You know, some of them still making content today. Others, maybe not as much. And some others, not at all. But uh, as far as, like, Tokyo Kuni goes, Kevin Kuni. He is the OG, the true goat as far as uh, J-Vlogging goes, and the real blueprint for what you see a lot of 
nowadays, you know, with a lot of the the now mainstream people like abroad in Japan and Sharla and uh, you know all these others out there. But he was the one that started a lot of that type of editing because he came from the TV world. So he basically put together essentially TV episodes of certain aspects of life in Tokyo. Well, you just cut them up really short uh, to fit with the YouTube time limit back in the day. And it was really, really engaging content. And, you know, I often go back and watch some of those old videos. And yeah, the quality, you know, especially compared to what you see these days is pretty potato. If I do say so myself. Uh, and, uh, you know, a lot of what Kevin did back then was pretty novel, but now is kind of, you know, you know, pedestrian. Because, you know, back in the day, nobody really edited like that. They, they were just pretty much either dads with camcorders or basically just random dudes with webcams just talking about whatever. <laughs> that sounds familiar. But regardless, um, really enjoyed his stuff. And I still go back and watch it even to this day. And I also do the same thing for the late, great Roger Swan, who um, at the time of this recording would have celebrated his 33rd birthday if he was still alive a couple days ago. And uh, just got done watching a nice documentary that someone put together for him um, to commemorate that occasion. And it really brought me back to, uh, to that time in my life because, you know, Roger edited a lot like uh, Toku Kuni did, Kevin Kuni. Uh, but the difference between him and Kuni was that Roger had that relatability, you know, that sense of connection, you know, just an ordinary dude, you know, making his way into Japan and stuff like that. And plus, he was really close to my age. He was a year younger than me. So, you know, we were uh, able to relate that way. And he's from Michigan, Battle Creek. And, you know, he went to Western Michigan University out in Kalamazoo, where I eventually went many years after the fact, oddly enough. But, uh, yeah, we just always had this, uh, this connection. And I left so many comments on his videos, and he left a couple comments on mine. But sadly, a lot of those are lost to time because Google when they did the shift back in 2012 for the comment system, a lot of those old legacy comments were lost. So sadly, you know, I don't have those old comments of Roger Swans around anymore. And it'd be nice to, uh, to see some of them, you know, uh, but such is life, right? So, <clears throat> yeah, sorry, I'm losing my voice here, but, uh, you know, kind of is what it is when you're doing it raw, baby. But yeah, guys, that's uh, basically I wanted to talk to you about tonight. And with that said, this is the Andy Sign. Sign for now. And as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. And as always, we're going to wave until the end card is over. So, also, uh, question of the day. Kind of a bad time to ask it, but uh, who inspired you to uh, want to come out to Japan? Let me know in the comments down below. Booty boops. And uh, we'll see you next time.